Hi, I see we're live on Facebook. Um, hi, everybody on Facebook. We are working out uh, just a couple of things, but oh, here we go. I think we're, we're pretty good to go then. All right, um, Aracel, you're still muted, just to let you know. Uh, but just to introduce our speaker this evening, uh, this is Araceli Perez. We have been, uh, she has been giving this presentation for us for like probably close to a decade. We've seen her through um, pregnancies where she has spoken when she's been like nine months pregnant, like showed up at the library, just incredible. Um, uh, and just one of our favorite speakers. Um, Araceli works with uh, Peter's and helps run Peter's Wood Refinishing, which is a Chicago-based company that uh, serves both the city and the suburbs. They do high quality wood refinishing for projects that are large and small. Uh, they're also an established vendor with, with us. As I said, they've been working for, uh, with us and, and for many of our members for years. Um, uh, they specialize in on-site stripping and refinishing of wood. And uh, they also do uh, a lot of their stuff in-house at their shop. Um, they do a lot of high quality stuff. They have great prices. Uh, they're in great standing on Angie's list. And Araceli is the face and voice of P Peter's Wood Refinishing. Uh, she can do assessments, all kinds of stuff, and she really knows her stuff. So she's, uh, she's more than a spokesman. She could do all the work in her sleep at this point as well. So um, thank you so much again for being with us. And um, I can let you um, take it from here. Um, you might want to put your screen in, in presentation mode, though. We don't actually say we see um, what you see in okay. terms of all the stuff on the side. Is that better? Uh, still seeing the same thing where we see all the thumbnails along the left side. All right, let's see. I'm new at this, as you can tell. This um, is so there should be a view presentation, like view something like that. Um, in the, in the actual PowerPoint um, program, up at, up at the top, somewhere like along the bar. All right. Well, I will let Janet play with this while I, <laughs> <laughs> while I get started. Um, can you try and share the video? So hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here tonight. This is my very first online webinar as carla said we've we've done several but in law in person and now we have this uh, going uh, you know what carla, um, can i can i forward this to you do you think you could share it oh yeah i can do that for sure um okay. also just to let you guys know everybody who's watching um we're going to wait until the end to take questions so as you have questions throughout, um, please don't put them in the chat, but we'll put them in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. And we will uh, sort through those as we go and pull out as many as we have time for. Um, okay, checking my email too. So whenever, keep checking it for when that comes up. Um, you know what though, actually, so if I'm the one sharing it, I, you can't forward it, you can't advance it. So, oh, um, I mean, worst case scenario, we can look at it this way. It's just not, you know. Um, All right, let's not see. Quite as big, but but there should be there should be. Oh, look at the look at the left and the very far left. Keep going left. Uh, oh. Other left. Yeah. <laughs> see where it yeah. says view. Yeah, try that. Um, only. Is that better? It's better. It's not the full screen. Let me see if there's another. Um, hmm. Weird. Well, it's better with slide only. So maybe let's just stick with that just in the interest of uh, okay. getting this show on the road. Um, but yeah, everybody, we will take questions at the end. So we'll talk for about until around seven o'clock. Is that about right, Aris? Yeah. And then um, we'll be on till around 715 if that's okay also. Um, so we can take 15 minutes of questions afterwards. Perfect. Right. Yes. Great. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Jillian, for having us again. We're super excited to be here tonight. Um, it is one of our favorite uh, topics, um, family, wood, you know, um, so we're very, very excited. We're going to get started. Uh, I should probably tell you uh, that I've been doing this for a very long time, 20 years now. Uh, it's how long I've been doing this for, and um, and I love it. I love every single day. 
um, just being able to go to work and um, there it is. I think I got it. Uh, just being able to go to work is super exciting. Um, so 20 years, I'm married to Peter. Peter is real, he does exist. Um, we've been married for a long time. We have three kids together and uh, we're based out of Chicago. Uh, he's been a finisher for longer than I have. Uh, let's see here, what else can I tell you? Well, we're gonna get started with the stripping and refinishing of your woodwork. And um, if you've been to any of our workshops before, you will know that, um, or if you've done some stripping uh, yourself at home, you will know that the most crucial, crucial part to stripping your woodwork, it's the prepping. If you don't do the proper uh, protection of your floors, your walls, you will certainly damage your walls, damage your floors. And so it's very important to have the right look. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit just so that you can see the different materials we have here. Um, you want to make sure you're prepping with tape. You wanna have the right tape. This frog tape is wonderful. It's a little pricey, but it will keep your plastered walls safe. We also uh, could use the, uh, the, the 3M blue tape, which is wonderful for walls, and over plastic or anything that is not going directly on your finishes, you could use the Scott tape, a Scotch tape, which is very, very economical, and um, it, it sticks really well. So this is a good thing to use. Um, you want to have plastic, you could just get a big a big box like this at Home Depot, Menards, or your local Ace Hardware for, I don't know, $22, $23. And there's plenty in here. There's 16 feet wide by 100 feet. So one box of this, and you can do pretty much your whole house. For doorways, if you were doing one door, and or you were doing a room, you'd want to use something thicker to eliminate or to minimize the dust from traveling um, all over the house. And for that, I suggest you use at least a two mil. If you could use a, a four mil, that would be best because it is thicker and, um, and that will protect your home. That will protect you or help you with a lot of cleaning. So that's the preparing part. Um, you want to protect your walls, you want to protect your floors, as I mentioned, before you start stripping. And the way to do that, uh, and I have pictures in here, you could see where we're taping along the, the wall, right where the trim work is, and I can't find it. You want to make sure that you are using a, a good amount of the tape. This is only a one inch, but there's also two inch on there. And uh, Chris, I'm sorry, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, sure. I don't think people can actually see you. I can see you just fine on the right. Is that better? I, um, I don't know. I can see, well, no, I mean, like, I don't think they can see your thumbnail the thumbnail of you on the right hand side of the, of the screen actually showing them the materials. I think they only see the screen of the slideshow. Uh, no, I think they would be, they can, if they choose for view the speaker, they'll be able to see the slideshow and also the, okay. the image. Okay, so everybody, if you could select speaker view on the top right of your um, screen, and if somebody could just type in the Q&A that you can see okay, if you can see Araceli on the right. I could also pause the, the share um, if that works. Um, oh wait, here, Q&A, let's see. Uh, okay, um, okay, okay, they can see you. Okay, Perfect. all good, sorry, a few people couldn't for some reason initially, maybe that was why. That, that's what everybody. Okay. <laughs> so I was going just to kind of recap. I did the, I showed the, the scotch tape, the blue. Uh, I also showed the frog tape, which I said it was a little more expensive, but it's definitely a good, a good spend uh, when it comes to protecting your walls. Because these plaster walls are not easy to fix. 
And I know a lot of you might relate to that. Um, as a, as a... To cut your tape plastic and everything, I do like these. These are uh, just, this is actually a Craftsman, but every, like every tool company has it. Uh, it's very safe. You only, it's only sharp at the tip. So it's only about three quarters of an inch. I personally like these. Uh, they're just blades. Peter does not like them because he thinks they're too thin and they could be dangerous. But I use these for my mail all the time and to cut plastics. So that you want to also have a good, good pair of gloves. Um, they need to be thick because they're protecting your, your hands from the stripper. So I do like these. They're nice, they're comfortable. You need to be able to move in them because you need to grab the, the brush with the strippers, right? So this is a good, good thing to have. Just uh, today, I talked to someone who did some stripping and he was using a regular latex uh, gloves you'd use, you know, when this whole pandemic started and they're just basic, you know, latex gloves. And he didn't realize before he knew it, he had really, 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 uh, messed up or burned his hand from the stripper going through the glove because it was so thin. So you want to make sure that you're getting a nice thick glove um, but that at the same time it's flexible. So that's important. Uh, please make sure you have that in your list. Um, we talked about tape. You want to also use, you could use newspaper, you could use uh, rosin paper, you could use brown paper. Whatever paper you have, even, um, what is that, uh, cardboard, you could use anything on your floor. In case you do have a little bit of a spillage from the stripper, it's not also stripping your floor. The, the paper or the cardboard is going to absorb it. So that's important to have. Um, so once we have everything in place, let me see if I can go back to sharing here. Let's see. Once we have everything, our floors are protected, our walls are protected, then we'd want to go on to the stripping point, which is our most or favorite part of the whole process. Um, Janet's going to bring over a door. Right when we were getting ready, we actually added some stripper to this door for you to see what 15 minutes of stripper uh, soaking would do. And oh my, is it amazing. And it's very fun. Right here, just we can show it. This is Janet. If you ever call Peter's Woodrow Finishing. Hello. She would be taking your call. And I'm gonna bring this up closer so you can see how fun this is. Um, it really just takes the first coat of paint and it goes right through it. Can you see it okay, Carla? Yes, yeah, I can see it. Perfect. So what, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be adding a little bit more of the stripper uh, just so you can see. The biggest, mistake I see people, the biggest mistake I see people doing is they'll put on the, strip, the stripper and then they take it off too soon. We need to make sure we let the stripper do its job. And with that, with that I mean you need to let it sit in there for 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, for as long as it needs, just so that it can, it can do what it's supposed to do. Okay. So here, we would, see this is, this is 15 minutes worth, this is 15 minutes worth of soaking, the stripper on the paint, and this is an exterior side of a window sash. These are actually um, sashes that came out of a bungalow in Evanston and uh, we're going to be stripping that that window it's actually a beautiful beautiful three section window two thick uh one fix and two casement windows and you could see how easily that first coat of paint came off because we let it sit on there so i'm going to be putting a little bit more of that stripper on there we're going to let it sit so you can see what what the stripper will do if you're doing this right and don't be shy on the amount of stripper you're going to be putting on it just because um, 
Araceli, can you can you remind us of what the name of that stripper product is again? We have we use different kinds. Uh, the the citrus strippers you can find at uh, the uh, citrus stripper you can find at like Home Depot. Um, there's also sip sprit, uh, sip stripper uh, that's carried by Sharon Williams. The one we use is industrial and it's regulated, so you would need to own a business to because you have to go through plenty of paperwork to, to be able to buy it. Um, so, uh, what's that second one? We had citrus strip, and the second one was um, uh, the sip. Do we have a bottle of the sip stripper? Janet's going to look for one to see if we okay, have thanks. a Got a couple of questions about it. Yeah. Uh, the sip stripper and, like I said, the citrus. And they're both really good. The only thing is, like I said, if you get impatient and start doing what I just did, uh, you see it's only been a couple of minutes. But there's still some paint coming off. Um, I don't know if you're able to see it there. So if, if you wait the way you're supposed to wait, this will be a fun project. Now, if you're not waiting and are, look, and are looking to finish up within a few minutes, it's not gonna work for you because you're not letting the stripper do what the stripper does, which is uh, making the paint soft so that it can be removed. I'm gonna have um, a little more on this and then we can come back to this window in a few minutes after it sits on here um, and i'm not wearing gloves but you shouldn't be doing this you do need your gloves uh, i just find that it's easier for me to do it without them um, because i'm going to be showing you other other products but but normally if i'm doing a, a stripping job and that's all i'm doing i definitely make sure that i put my gloves on okay so we're gonna let this sit here for just a couple of a few minutes so he, I can come back and I can show you how well this is done it's true. Okay, just to remind everybody too, we're gonna wait until the end, uh, going to take the rest of the questions. Um, we'll get through as many as we can at the end just so we can keep uh, Araceli moving through as well. So don't think we're ignoring you. Well, uh, let me see this one. This is, this is, this is actually another stripper that it's, it's pretty good. It's called the two minute remover. Uh, you can get this at any Benjamin Moore store or Ace Hardware should be able to have it. Uh, it's called two minute uh, remover. And it comes in a liquid. I definitely would stay away from like a liquid stripper if because it's very runny, almost like water. And if you're, if you're not, or if you put a little bit too much, it's gonna definitely run down to your floors. So you want something like this that is more of a gel. Uh, you can see when I applied it on this one, this is a gel, so you're able to control, you're able to control the stripper and the amount of stripper you're putting on every piece. So once that's working, uh, you wanna make sure that you're also soaking your corners very well. Let's see. Apply a liver a coat of remover. We went through that. And then, see, it says a bristle brush. It's very important that you're using your 90 cent brush and not your $30 or $20 brush because once you use it with stripper, it's done. It's not going to work anymore. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're using the right brush and you're not wasting your money. To remove, you don't really need any, to remove the stripper, you need a spatula. You need uh, tools that you might have around the house. You know, this is, this is actually just like a tiny, kind of like a blade, but it's not, sh it's not too sharp or it's gonna damage your wood. Uh, you could use screwdrivers, you know, something that you can, that has a, a pointy um, edge, but it's not too sharp. Again, you don't want to scratch or damage your doors or piece of furniture, whatever it might be that you're, that you're working on. Uh, so allow the remover to sit, and then well, you saw how the stripper will make the paint all blemishy and ready to go. You want to repeat the application as many times that you'd want as you want. Today I, I, I received a question. Somebody asked me, how many, you know, do you do multiple coats to strip? The answer is yes. 
Um, there really isn't an exact answer because we do as many as necessary. A lot of these bungalows have anywhere from one coat of paint if they were recently painted in the 90s or they have 12 coats of paint. And when they do have the 12 paint, coats of paint, we go through all the different colors of the rainbow. We go through the green and the blue and the yellow and the pink and the uh, peach, you know, so many different colors that were put on there. And every color has, will take the stripper a little different because like, for example, if you come across one that it's kind of sandy looking, kind of like a taupe, uh, it's very likely that it's from the 50s and that it's a milk based paint. That one is very hard to get out. You really need to do a little bit of sanding and, and stripping and, and just a lot of stripping because it's very, very hard. So there really isn't a rule as to how many coats of stripper you should be doing uh, before it's really stripped. You can see on this picture that I have a section where it's painted the bottom section where that plate rail and the and the the other rails are that's halfway stripped and then part of the crown molding it's fully stripped and cleaned so it's it's just a process um i don't know what else i can tell you about the stripping before i move on to the sanding except that please make sure you're prepared uh, you're protecting yourself and your furniture, anything that it's around the stripper. If you have goggles, if you're doing crumb moldings, you want to wear your goggles, you want to wear uh, a mask. It just depends on what type of stripper you're using. If it's harsh, you want to wear a mask. And if it's something, uh, something organic and really there is no smell to it, it would be a, optional. But always try and wear um, at least those sanding masks with the little filter those are those are wonderful to use I don't have any here because as you may know masks have not or these type of masks have not been that available to us and we just use the bigger ones do we have a mask around here Janet um, we just use the bigger ones that that we can reuse and then just replace the filters and and then the smaller uh, K95 ones, those are what we're using for sanding. All right, so once we have, oh, something very quick. So these windows, my client stripped and, um, or the sashes, and then this is how far she got. You can see where they're pretty stripped, but they're not fully there yet. There's a little tap of paint on there so to do that to get all that off if you want a very nice clean piece of wood once it's at that point you want to do another coat of the stripper same thing let it sit so it can it can soak in there and then you can take like a lot of sawdust and just kind of work it in or if you don't have a if you don't have that available you could use some steel wool. So the steel wool comes in different grades. Uh, the, the bigger the number, the, the, the harsh it's going to be. In this case, this is a double zero, so this is a pretty fine steel wool. We also, there's a one zero, four zeros. Normally for stripping, uh, we use number two and number three so that it can clean. And these are the masks that we would use as we're stripping um, right now, but you don't need to go out and buy one of these. These are probably about $30. They're pretty hard to breathe in if you're not used to them, but they're certainly good. They have the filters and then we just replace the filters. So these are pretty good. Um, these are pretty good to have around. Let's see, so sanding. So start with the medium grade paper sand and always sand with the grain so here i have an 80 that's probably about as harsh as you should be using on any of these woodwork because you don't want to sand so much that you're losing your profiles uh, by profiles it's um, the little grooves and designs on your woodwork so this is as, as, as harsh as i would use on there and you can take a page of it. It's really a, a 
kind of like the size of a piece of paper. So you would take it, cut it in half. It, it breaks pretty easily. So you break it in half and, and then you take the one half and you can either fold it to make it into a quarter or you could come again and break it again if you'd want to do this so you're not wasting a lot of a lot of paper and then from here uh, you could do this and use both sides or you could just uh, add a block can I get a block of wood you could add a block of wood or something to give you a little better pressure and you want to make sure that you're sanding anything that has grooves or or, or that has uh, no a little one I'm sorry uh, or that has uh, any type of design you want to make sure that you're using uh, you're sanding by hand you really don't want to be using a, a sander unless it's a flat surface you can see where Janet got me a this is probably half of an inch you could use three quarters to an inch by a good uh, this is only two by uh, three and a half inches but I would fit my block into my sandpaper and then you create a uh, sanding block and this will help you as you're pressing down this will help you put a little more pressure on the wood for to finish up faster so you want to have this stuff around you want to start with something as coarse as that or maybe not so much then from there you would go to a 120 and, and then you want to finish up at the end with a 320 grade sandpaper so you could get a smoother finish uh, you'd want to sand a couple of times just to make sure you're you know you're getting as much as you can out without over sanding uh, from there we go into the big question after all that work in stripping uh, after all that work in stripping now it's time to choose a color right and there are so many brands so many different types of um, of dyes and, and, and oil based and um, water based stains it's so hard to choose what we want and there might be times when you like a red chestnut and then a min wax color and then you go to old masters and the old masters doesn't quite look the same so uh, it's important to buy the these are quartz but they also have smaller bottles like pens to buy the different pens or, or quartz of the colors that you think you want that you think you like and you want to make sure can I get that uh, you want to make sure you test it on a spare piece of wood if you're doing baseboards then if you have an extra piece of baseboard from the same age you'd want to use it there you want to make your samples um, here I have a few samples on a piece of an oak baseboard from 1920s so I want to make sure that I'm making my samples my samples on the piece of wood with the even with the sheen if you'd want you just want to make sure that this is absolutely what you're going to be wanting to see every day when you come home again you just went through all that work of the stripping now you want to make sure that it's the right color for you um this is this is one of our very very good products the old masters they also have samples in every store you go and they have stains they'll have a chart like this and it will show you for example here you can see where the natural uh stain will look like this in the in the oak but then it would look much lighter on the pine on the newer pine um, so you want to make sure that you're testing your woods or your stains on your different woods too because same color might look completely different you can see here where the pecan looks so much darker on the oak and then so much lighter but not every color is like that some colors look pretty pretty even so it's very important to check your wood to you check your stains what type of stains you're using um, this is the one that we used to be able to see in every store 
unfortunately, Minwax was purchased over by a different company and it's not as available anymore. So um, it's, 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 not an, it's not an easy, easy find. However, if you see this, this is a penetrating stain. Penetrating stain, it's, it's very good to use on oak and in, in woods that have a closer grain, unless, um, unless you know or you're doing this for, for, for a job or, or as, a, as a hobby, uh, if it's your first time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you use that. I suggest you'd use something more like a wiping stain because with the wiping stain, you, you have more control over your stain, how long you can leave it on there for longer and it's not going to discolor and it's not going to um, be a, a penetrate, it's not going to penetrate as much as the penetrating wood. So wiping stain definitely suggests for uh, first timers on this product. If you have a porous wood, which a lot of the bungalows I've been into have either oak or birch or pine in the back. The back normally would have pine or a lighter birch, uh, but for the most part, they're either birch or pine, or birch or, or oak. If you do have birch, or, or if you're working on maple or uh, pine, you know, just one of these uh, porous woods, then I suggest you'd use a pre-stain. Again, Minwax, uh, it's, it's not easy to find anymore. A pre-stain is really a wood conditioner, and there's other brands that have the same product. And the reason why you'd want to use this is because, so this is, this is by M.O. Campbell. And these normally J.C. Lick would carry, and it's also the, uh, the pre-stain. Or the pre-stain, it's what, it's, what, they, what they're calling theirs. Um, so what, what, what that does, really, is it will go into the, the, the pouring of the wood. It covers them. So when you're staining, your stain will go in there more even. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has had um, the experience of, of staining pine or maple, and suddenly they come back to see that it really took very heavily in some areas, and now your special walnut looks pretty black. It's just because the wood took what, it's just porous wood. It took as much as it could, and now you have a lot of stain on there. So with the pre-stain, you're gonna avoid that. Okay. So my number. Really quick, uh, sorry, this is the great Oz again. I'm not sure if you guys figured this out yet, but if you hover along uh, the left side of the thumbnail where Araceli is on the right, at least those of you watching on Zoom, you can drag that line to the left to make the thumbnail of her larger. Um, it took me a few minutes to figure that out. <laughs> so, so hopefully maybe you figured that out by now. Okay. I could stop sharing too. Um, is no, I right? think it's good. If making you larger in the screen, it, it's, it's just it's easier to see you. So that's all. But I think it's nice to see what you're doing. Perfect. Uh, so, the, okay, that's with the sanding, color staining. Um, for the staining, same thing. You could use, uh, once you've chosen your color and you have everything sorted out. You want to use a cloth. Cotton cloth works. If you have an old t-shirt laying around, a white one, cut it up. If you don't want to go and get a bag of these uh, rugs, they're, they're painter's rugs and they're probably about, we get them by the, by the pallet, so I don't know exactly. I want to say they're probably about $13, $14 for a bag of like 10 pounds. So they're, they're, not, they're not expensive. But if you have an old t-shirt that you're not using, it's, it'll be a free, it'll be a free, free cloth. You could use that, you could also use um, just a brush, you know, a, a same type of the disposable 90 cent brush for the corners, the cloth. Uh, you could use a foam brush too, just to get your stain really in there. Um, so let's see here. Let's, we already chose that. I don't know. Well, I know we're going to go to the questions at the end. If you, if it turned out that the color you're, you're, you're looking for, it's not as deep as you, as you would want it, then you want to do a second coat 
of the same stain just for a deeper look uh, a little more filled once you're good with that and you apply your stain you want to let it dry 6 to 12 hours um, it just depends if you're using an oil base or a water base a lot of the water base are ready to go in two hours um, so it just depends on what you're using make sure you read the instructions on every uh, on the can all right so we got everything stained and now we're on to our um, uh, finishing process it is very important that you clean your wood after it's been sanded you can use a uh, cat cloth you could use uh, a, a cotton cloth kind of spray it with a little bit of water and clean it uh, well that that would be before you're staining but you want to make sure that there's no contaminants on there otherwise the the finish will have a reaction and you might not get the results that you want so you want to make sure it's dust free and your stains on there pristine especially you want to dust it especially before your stain by the way um for the finishes so many same thing with the stains so many brands uh, so many bases this is an interior or water-based finish that it's just wonderful um, it's very easy to use with a brush and in terms of what brush you want to use remember this is your finish and this is what you're going to be looking at so you want to make sure that you're using a nice brush it, you want it to be soft not too big this is only a two inch so you don't want it to be too wide to where you don't have control of where you're putting your your varnish or your your finish so, and i do personally do like these angled ones because i have more control i can go into little corners on my doors my window sashes and just be able to get the finish in there so this is a good brush to have um, I have another one here uh, you can see where this is the extra soft this is good for like oil finishes uh, with the oil finishes they'll take longer to dry which allows them to kind of smooth out on their own but um, yeah it's, it's a good idea to get a, a good brush for this I know for the stain and the the, the stripper I said get a disposable one but not for your finish okay um, so with the finishes you can also use a wax this is a a paste wax basically this goes on there it sits on there and then you wipe off the excess you can even go back and do a little bit of buffing um, this is traditional shellac uh, shellac also it's it's very nice shellac comes in clear and it also comes in an umber if you had a home that had natural wood and you wanted that golden amberish look then you'd want to use the umber um, it will change the color a little bit more than just the clear but the clear normally is what we would use and it, you know we we normally at peters we spray all of our finishes and we use a lot of lacquer post catalyzed lacquers um, but that's very thin that's that wouldn't be something I'd suggest you use at home because it needs to be sprayed it's very thin it's very runny and it just it, it must be sprayed but the the products I've showed to you is something that you can definitely do at home you would do a coat of your finish whatever finish you decided to do you want to let that dry thoroughly and then you could go back and do a very fine sanding uh, you could do 400 grid um, sandpaper again go back and take all the dust off and then you want to repeat your application most finishes will take the can always says two coats but most 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 finishes could take three or four coats and if you're working on your front door uh, in the city of Chicago we do minimum of four coats just because of the different changes we have and depending on how thick the finish is. Definitely four coats with the water base, three to four coats if we were using an oil-based marine varnish for the outside. But it, you know, it really varies because remember the can is talking about newer wood. Our homes 
are 100 year old homes with very dry wood and they might absorb completely absorb the first couple of coats and then we need to go back and add a couple of more on here i don't know if you can see i'm showing you a staircase we refinished um, in oak park uh, actually that home was just sold last year i don't know if we have time to talk about floors but i would just run through these real quick um, i know that in one of the presentations i said that 100 percent of the the kitchens bungalow kitchens have maple floors and i stand corrected because not too long ago i found a bungalow that had original three and a quarter inch pine floors so um, i probably worked i don't know i want to say two three hundred bungalows and and i have found uh, one that had uh, pine and not the the maple so there really isn't anything uh, any particular rule for these. Uh, removing of your carpet, if you decided you're tired of your carpet, it's been in there since the 70s, the 80s, I've seen a lot of those. Um, you want to make sure that as it's being removed, it's being cut into very small rolls of carpet. I suggest three, four feet, something that you can easily manage um, as you're taking it outside or if you're going to um, put it out in the garbage can, something that will fit in there uh, so that garbage mints are not, you know, dealing with that and, and that they actually are happy to help you get rid of it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. make sure you do smaller, um, smaller rolls. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a bungalow uh, floor uh, by uh, this one was by like Addison and Central, uh, that neighborhood. I think that's Portage Park. Uh, and this is what the effort looks like. Um, I'm going to skip through the other projects, but on here you can see this was a before. This is a before when it was fully painted. This is during the process, and then this is what could be um, after it's been stripped. Um, I'm going to go back to my little window here real quick so that we can move on to the questions. So, Janet, Janet, so I'm going to just bring it up here. Okay, perfect. I'm going to need you to move your hand. You can see here where it continued to work on the wood. And you can see where the paint is just completely coming off. So this is the second coat uh, on there. And now we're getting to a green paint. So as I, as I said before, the trick to this is letting it, letting it just do what the stripper is supposed to do, which is re, uh, reactivate the paint so that we can remove it. Um, with just two uh, coats of the stripper, this is how far we've gotten. And I can tell you that it's probably going to take two or three more coats before I can actually say my window is completely stripped. But I start seeing wood on this section where it brings me hope that it will be, it will be fully stripped at one point. All right, Carla, are we ready for questions? Yeah, we've got we've got about five so far. If you guys can feel free to, to plug some more in if you if you have additional ones. Um, so the first question was, uh, does the stripper work on stain as well as paint? And is there a different stripper that you'd use for stained wood? The answer is yes. It works on stain uh, and st um, varnish, I guess, um, varnished and stains as well as paints. Uh, the varnish is going to require a lot less of the coatings, normally about two, two uh, before you get ready to steel wool it. Um, so I, well, let me go back. Two, three, including the last one you're gonna do for the cleaning with the steel wool. Um, in terms of what stripper to use, there's only one strip, one stripper I do not like for stained wood, and that is the, um, uh, what is it called? Oh, peel away. The peel away, uh, because if you let it sit on there for too long, 
um, because it's not paint, it will take minerals away from your wood and then you'll end up with burn marks on the wood. So the only stripper I would never use on stained wood would be the peel away. Okay, and does that also, there's another one after that that was, what do you recommend for removing old shellac? Is that the same deal? You could use the stripper. I know some people use alcohol to remove shellac. Um, I don't know how well that would clean it, if it would clean it thoroughly, but you could move, you could use any of the strippers and it'll certainly uh, strip it right off. Okay, and there's nothing, the peel away, but no peel away once again? Um, with the shellac, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no, I would, I wouldn't do the peel away, no. Yeah. No, I, I've seen way too many with, um, I, Janet's gonna have some fun with the stripper now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've seen too many burn marks um, from oh, wow. the Yeah, actually yesterday I went to see a job where this, this, this sash is from and they used the pillow away on their single panel 19, early 1900 door, doors and they left it on there for too long where the top coat, so the, the doors are built, they're, they're solid core but they're built in layers. There's a center core uh, of pine or a different type of wood. And then there's your facing, which is only about, um, it's hard to tell on here, but it's probably about an one eighth, one eighth to quarter of an inch, depending on the door, uh, facing on, on the doors. So what they did is they left the door on there too long, where that top coat of, of wood, we can call it a veneer, um, the veneer started peeling and now the door it's on one side, it's completely ruined. Uh, we're gonna need to take all that veneer and re-veneer the whole door because the pillow uh, just really got in there and it got behind the wood into the glue and then it, it lifted the veneer. Wow, okay. Um, okay, uh, Sandy's having an awful time trying to strip a radiator. And she wondered if there was any tools, suggestions for getting into the second set of piping to remove the paint. Uh, radiators, radiators are hard because they are so detailed. Um, I definitely do like wired brushes, uh, the brass ones. Um, no, they're smaller. Uh, the wire brushes, um, you know, it's just, it's easier to get in there. However, what you want to do, yeah, perfect. And this is, this is, this is just a good size for you to really get in there. This is, this is, um, a, a plastic, but they also have them in brass. And, um, and this is a nice tool to have because you can really get in there uh, and kind of scroll around to get that stripper in. But the biggest thing to the radiators is just letting the stripper sit long enough. And you don't even need to take off every coat. You could do a coat of the stripper, let it sit for 20 minutes. And if you start seeing that it's kind of drying out, but it's still bubbling a little bit, you add more stripper instead of taking it off. And, and then it just has double the reaction. Okay. Um, Katya, uh, she said her, their wood was stripped from its original bungalow cherry to a sickly blonde color, then polyurethane. Is there any shortcut to remedying this or does she, does she need to use chemical stripper, sanding and so on? Uh, yeah, I, I saw that, I saw a lot of that. Um, that a lot of that was done in the 90s and early 2000s where, where they took out the the red mahoganies and the cherries and they went to like golden oaks or clear but the good news is that golden oaks and very blonde woods are coming back in style um, i've done so many of those projects <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> but no we've done so many so many uh natural projects lately especially floors um I'd say out of the last 10 floors, seven of them have been natural or some sort of a country white or, or just a very light stain. Um, and to answer her question, uh, she could certainly strip it, have it stripped, or if she just wanted to do something for now, um, she could try with the door, just a very good sanding, adding a gel stain or a, a poly shade on it. Um, that wouldn't be my preference. My preference would always be strip it, get it 
back to bare wood so you can get your stain in there and you see very nice lines with the stain. But if that's not something she'd want to do or if it's too much, um, she could try a room at a time with the poly shades. Okay, um, what are the pros and cons of water and oil-based stain and finish? Um, good question. The, the oil base gives you more of a traditional look. It kind of enhances the beauty of the wood and some accents of the, of the redness in the wood. So people like me that like mahoganies and, and red mahogany and brown mahogany and some more mahogany, we love that, <laughs> you know, very traditional. Uh, the modern people, on the other hand, don't, are not inclining towards reds. They're getting away from reds. So if if your preference is something more blonde or or um, or white or gray or just a dark walnut without the red, I'd say go with the water base because it's not going to enhance the red in the wood as much. Uh, the water base, of course, minimal smell. It costs more, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't really smell up or get anything stinky, and it dries faster. That's the water base. Oil base, like I said, natural beauty of the wood. It takes longer to dry for the most part, and you, there will be quite a bit of smell with the oil bases. Um, how do you safely manage the lead in old lead paint? Uh, normally with lead, um, homeowners can remove it themselves if they want. They wanna make sure they're wearing a mask. And the biggest thing to lead when you're stripping lead is keeping it wet. Do not sand it, do not scrape it. You wanna make sure that you're, uh, you're, you're, you can either use a bottle, like a spray with water, or uh, you could just use a chemical stripper. The chemical stripper will keep it wet. Lead is very heavy and it doesn't travel any further than three to six feet, depending on the height, but it's, it's not gonna travel far. It's, 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 it's not like asbestos where asbestos gets on the airborne and then we can breathe it in. Lead won't do that. It will fall down to the ground. So you want to make sure that your floors are protected. You don't want any of those uh, particles of the lead going into your wood floor. So you want to make sure it's all protected. You want to keep it wet, um, dispose it immediately. And um, again, never scrape it, never sand it. Okay. Also, wash your clothes because that seeps in through your skin, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Oh, we're, we're older. It's not going to affect us. Yeah. <laughs> um, what products do you recommend to clean and shine hardwood floors that will not dull the shine on the floors? Um, they previously used Bona hardwood floor cleaner, but it dulled the finish of her floors. Yeah, Bona is, is a good product. Uh, Bona has different products. It's not just the cleaner. They also have a rejuvenation product, which you can use that every once in a while, like twice a year. And that gives a little bit of luster to the floor. I know this is a tricky question because um, for a long, long time, everybody used Murphy soil. But at one point, you know, people started thinking, well, at least a residue and it built up. So we're getting away from that. Then um, water and vinegar. Um, it's also something that a lot of the people use. And um, do not wax your floors. <laughs> it will build up and then it will look very dirty. But if I had to give you an answer, I'd say the Bono products are basically what are working best at this point. Okay, and you said there were different kinds. Was there a particular uh, kind that's, that won't dull the floors that you use? Um, I know that Bona has one that is just Bona hardwood floor cleaners. Uh, Janet has has this one here. This is the one we use here. Uh, Bona hardwood floor um, concentrated okay. art cleaner. So you want to use something like this. Um, I like I said, it, there really isn't an easy question because it depends too on what type of product you have if you had a water base is going to wear off or dole off faster. Mm, yeah. Um, okay, this one I can guess your answer, but I'll let you take it. Uh, how much was, uh, how much is the cost to strip and refinish a staircase and pedestal? The one that you showed. The one that I showed, um, 
Those vary. I'd want to say that one was probably around 25, 2600. We really would need to see the the job to be able to determine the exact price, depending on the amount of paint that it has. As you saw, the picture on that of that staircase had plenty of um, spindles. They were very close to each other, but they were pretty flat. They're just long uh, pieces of wood where some of the some of the spindles might be very ornate, and so that will definitely affect the price. Yeah, um, and just to give you a, a, a time, so it, it's 6.58, Araceli, we said we could stay on until 7.15, is that, is that so good? Yeah, 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 that works. Okay. So we're gonna get through as many of these questions as we can, you guys, but if they keep rolling in, we might not get to quite all of them, um, but we'll, we'll send you a follow-up email also with a recording of everything we talked about tonight, because I'm, I'm guessing some of these you've already answered throughout the night. Um, but people join at different times. Um, so you'll, you'll get all of that as well. Um, but let's keep going through and see how many of these we can get through. Um, can you expand on porous woods and the different types of wood and their needs in terms of stain and finish? For example, is oil better for pine, water for oak, et cetera? For the, the different woods uh, of the floor, if we're talking about a bungalow, uh, normally we would have oak, in the front of the house and probably the front bedrooms and then maple in the kitchen or as i said before the pine um and we go back to the same to the same thing what type of look are they looking for do they want a very classic bungalow type of look then i would do an oil base um, if there's any kits in the house and they're going to come back soon i would do a water base um, in terms of what I prefer, I do prefer the oil base. Um, if I do a water base, I always do prefer to use an extra coat because it is thinner. So every water base is always gonna be thinner. It doesn't build up as much. So uh, I would do a third coat of the, the finish on the floor if they decided to go that route. Sorry. Um. Fire. <laughs> I was nervous there for a minute. Uh, <laughs> it's not me. I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, uh, there's a question, what is the best way to strip a window? But that might be just sort of going through the presentation, you know, just to sort of see the best way. Is there anything in particular to a window that you might, that maybe you didn't touch on tonight? No, well, in addition to, to protecting the floor and your walls, you want to make sure you also protect your glass. Um, you want to go around the, the perimeter of the, the glass and then do, a, you could do plastic or newspaper in the center just so you're not getting all the stripper on it. The stripper will clean off. Uh, the biggest thing I see with glass is that as they're getting sanded, then they're also scratching the glass. Mm. Very good. Yeah, sure. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of your glass at the same time. If there's chains on those glasses, you also want to protect your chains because believe me, I have tried and cleaning stripper and paint gunk out of chain is no fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> relate to that, Carla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Isaac had a question. I asked if you actually offer classes, like education classes, outside of the classes you do with us. Like I'm assuming he means maybe at your warehouse. Uh, no, I know at one point Carla and I talked about having this taco and margarita class at our shop, and um, then life happened, and then pandemia came, and and here we are. But yeah. it is something that we we considered at one point. Yeah. But no, the answer would be no. I, I normally just do these and then I do consultations. So I come out to people's homes, uh, both do the consultation as to what they could do and as well as quote on the projects. Or if somebody started, a lot of people got ambitious during this year. <laughs> and we have come to a lot of projects that were started and are not completed and they realize that winter is almost here and their front door is stripped. So that's where, that's where we are now. I would be more than happy to do the consultations, but at this point we don't have other classes. Gotcha. Um, how often should you recondition your floor and trim? Trim, you really, you really could go 50 years without doing anything to your trim. Um, 
in terms of the floor, floor will wear depending on the traffic you have. If it's, in my case, husband, Peter, which is who is real, Peter, um, three girls and a dog. Uh, we, let's see, we refinished our floors very, very dark. Then we got tired of the color. We went to a natural uh, about eight years ago and everything's pretty pristine except for the kitchen. So this year we had the kitchen redone or recoded. And um, so that kind of gives you a time frame. If it was just two people in the house, you could go 20 years and your floors might still be good. Um, so really there isn't a need to recoat floors unless they need it. Um, I see Wanda, uh, Wanda raised your hand. Um, Wanda, if you, if you have a question, if you could just type it into the Q&A section because we're um, along the bottom because we're taking things in the order that they come. Uh, okay, uh, do you have a book or guide that goes in detail of all these wood finishing steps uh, specifically for bungalows? Yes, yes I do. Um, if they want to send you an email, I could, I could send this to you. Um, and then you could just forward it to them. It's really the presentation, but if they have any particular questions, I could certainly be, I mean, I would be more than happy to answer them. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, recommendation, kind of recommendation for removing paint from door hardware. Door hardware, it's fun. Um, you can use the same technique with the stripper and the tiny brushes and and little dental tools that you might have around. Um, I've also, and this is gonna sound funny, but I've stripped hardware by boiling it with tomato juice. The acid in the tomato juice will uh, make the, the paint fall off. And, and then it's very easy to clean it with Brasso after that. Tomato juice, tomato paste, whatever you might have, or you could just throw it in the crock pot. <laughs> and it actually worked. Yeah, that crock pot trick is pretty great. And you just do, it's just with water, right? You don't yeah. even have to add any. Yeah, you could do, again, you know, uh, you could do the tomato juice from Aldi, a couple of the can, $3 cans, uh, or just water, just the, uh, the. I never tried the tomato juice trick. Interesting. So you use tomato juice in the crock pot. Okay. Yeah. Not just put, ah, very cool. All right. Very um, healthy. Yeah, and makes sense. Trick. yeah, it actually cleans it very well. The only thing is that once you get it out, if you want a nice polish, you need to have some a very fine steel wool and some of that brassel and just just work it in. Hmm, cool. Um, okay, uh, how do you know if a hardwood floor has been refinished too many times? I know they can only been, be done a certain amount of times, but how can you tell? For the most part, you're going to start seeing small splits in between the boards. Um, if you if you start seeing that your boards are given, um, our floors are not really like on a on a plywood sheet um, sub flooring. They're on stringers that go from side to side, and then there's a gap anywhere from three eighths up to one and a half inch in between the board and your sub floor. Uh, so if you start seeing your boards are breaking here and there. It might be time or it might be too much. Um, however, that happens in traffic areas anyway. Um, these floors are very hard. Um, you really could get seven or eight sandings off of a floor if they're being sanded correctly. Um, my suggestion would be going to an area close to a baseboard, uh, remove a piece of the base shoe, and then on there you'll see the curve and then yeah so the floor all of our floors are three quarters of an inch the bottom quarter it's it's the bottom and then there's a tongue and a groove so the groove goes into the tongue goes into the groove and this area which is only a quarter of an inch is really what we're working with so if you notice that your floor it's an eighth of an inch sanded, then you're you're pretty much at your last sanding. Yeah. And then also you'll start seeing nails. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, nails. Um, oh, somebody just mentioned to don't eat from your crock pot. Don't use it to cook food after no. you paint in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. just, just a disclaimer there. Um, <laughs> 
Even if it was tomato, you know, juice in there. No, yeah, but that is yeah. now your work crock pot, not your eating crock pot. Um, exactly. so thank you, Rachel, for, for bringing that up, making sure we said that. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, do you have a recommendation for removing carpet glue from wood floor? That's a good one. Carpet glue, you could use, you could use nap dye, you could use paint, paint thinner, it's very stinky, so you'd need one of those masks. But it really does a good job in melting the, the glue. Um, I've seen people using a hate gun, which it's it's no fun because you're on your knees. Um, but really, it's um, anything that will melt the glue, even uh, alcohol. Alcohol, you just sit there and do sections at a time. Um, that will work. Okay. And there was a question sort of related to that. So if you're using liquid strippers, you don't need to use a heat gun at all, right? No. Yeah. No. So, okay. Um, uh, once the wood is all refinished, what do you use to keep it clean? That's a pre-finished. I'm sorry, what was your question? Um, once the wood is finished, what do you use to keep it clean? Or is that just sort of what we... Once the... it's, it's you, you just need to clean it with a clean cloth. If you want to take a little, a little water or spray and spray the cloth before you wipe it. I personally clean all of my wood and my... my um, my furniture uh, once a year with, let me just get it real quick. Mm -hmm. It could be some sort of a, this is an oil, uh, Danish oil. It could be old, old English oil. Um, and I only do this maybe about once a year. And the only reason why I do it, I don't really need to condition it but the only reason why I do it is because there's snicks here and there from carts and rollerblades and bikes in the house uh, with the kids. But if you don't have all that wear, you can just wipe it with the cloth. Um, oh, this is a good one. I've seen this too. My crown molding has been painted over several times. I have a lot of natural light coming through my windows and there's a pinkish tint in spots on the molding. I was told that stripping the molding down to the original wood would eliminate the problems. Is that true? Um, yeah. Yes and no. Um, because what it's coming through, it's the dye from the original stain that was used on there. And it might have peeled along the, the, the way, or maybe someone sanded before painting it. And that dye from the, from the stain, it's working its way out and making your white look pink. But it's really the red mahogany color. It's ultra penetrating. It really, it was put on there to stay. And that's exactly what it's doing. If you strip it, you, then you would need to stain it back to a red mahogany or a dark color because it's, or, or a medium to a dark color, because it's really never going to completely clean off. Um, if you want to repaint it, um, you can use a shellac. The shellac will seal it. You could use a um, vinyl primer or um, any primer that contain, contains shellac because that will really seal that before you can repaint it. You can repaint it 10 times and if you're not priming it properly or sealing it with the shellac, it's gonna continue to do that. Okay. Um, have you ever used Zep wet look for wood floors? And if you did, did you like it? I'm trying to think um, if it's what I think, it was it was like a very low VOC. Uh, I've used so much stuff over the years. Uh, and to date, to date, I only used Loba Bonas and Teco and Masterline. But over the years, people will ask me to use their products, and I'll do it. Um, so I would I would need to go back into my files and kind of check to see if I've used it. But if it's what I think, then it was a good product. Okay. Um, uh, the, there's a few that are sort of related to this. Uh, the finish on a maple kitchen floor is wearing off in parts. Can it be refinished? So we talked about the wearing down, but there's a bunch of other, or a couple others that talk about, you know, what if you, it's wearing down in some areas, but not others, do you have to do the whole floor basically? Depending on the lighting, uh, normally if it's too worn to where it's gray or blackish looking, it, it does need to be sanded. Um, if it's kind of worn or it kind of looks whitish, 
It could certainly be just buffed and recoated, uh, but I'd suggest doing the full kitchen because depending on how the light hits it, you're always gonna be able to see somewhat of a difference of the, the, the spot that, that was coated and the, the other areas that were not. Gotcha. Um, what's the best way to fill gaps in hardwood floors that are already finished? Um, let me see if I have one here, uh, the wood filler. You could use a wood filler. I know a lot of people like uh, just sawdust with a little bit of linseed oil and they put it in there. Eventually the linseed oil will dry up and then you'll vacuum it up. Um, see, it's, it's also true with the wood filler, but it, it will last in there for longer time. So the wood filler basically, um, Janet is looking for one right now, uh, but the wood filler basically is, uh, it's kind of like Play-Doh and then you would play with it and make a long line and then kind of just stick it in there. That stay in there for a few years. I just, you just need to make sure that you're using the right color, the color of your floor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, maybe just two more. We're at 714. So um, uh, how do you tell if the paint is lead paint? You need to have it tested. Um, yeah, this is fine. So. This is the wood filler for the floors. So it's basically just a putty. Uh -huh. All right, uh, to answer uh, the next question, um, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. How do you tell if the paint is lead paint? You need to have it tested. Um, you would take a, a small section, send it out. Uh, you don't need to call an inspector because you know that it's unless you wanted to have it inspected that normally runs around seven eight hundred dollars depending on how many areas you wanted to test if you send it into a lab um, that probably be like around 120 130 150 but if you have um, you can also go to home depot or nards and buy a home kit so it's kind of it kind of looks like a cigarette <laughs> and and that's the test the only thing with these tests is that they're not as effective and then you got to test the test. So you want to test twice um, for that. So there's a 70 something percent chance, 83% chance that we have lead if our house was painted prior to 79, as you may know. Um, the, normally the quickest way of me knowing if there's lead is if I see the paint, especially outside in very, very perfect lines uh, will tell me that there's a very high chance of that being lead. In that case, uh, we just, we're just very careful. We strip it wet. Um, there is something you should know about testing lead is that once you test it and you, you get it positive, when you come to uh, sell your house, you have to disclose it. So I don't know um, if you'd wanna do that or you just assume that it is and then you work with it and just uh, assuming that it is and, and you know, it's, it's really, it's really a personal decision. Yeah, I feel like most all vintage homes just assume since 79, as you say, is when they, 78 or 79, when they banned lead paint. So it's probably just safe to assume and, and deal with it accordingly. But, um, but yeah. Um, okay, last question. Um, thanks for staying a little over, Araceli. Uh, what is the best time of year to refinish exterior doors and interior floors? Uh, interior floors I can do any given time. Any, any, it could be winter. We have exhaust fans, um, so it could be any any time of the year. Exterior doors, on the other hand, we only do those from May to September. So this week was our last week with front doors, uh, unless October turns out to be a good month, and we never know that until it's here. Um, there are months where we're stripping and refinishing doors into Halloween and then the years when we're stripping into Halloween and then there's other years when the first week of October and we're done. Got it. Yeah, most um, of the products, I'm sorry, <laughs> most, of our pro most of the products need 55 and over Fahrenheit degree temperatures in order for them to work right. Uh, there might be uh, people that want to do it in the winter time, but if this is not drying properly, it's not going to last as long. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, 
Well, thank you so much, Eric Kelly. Um, again, we're going to send out an email that will have a recording of this to everyone who um, signed up for the class. We'll have your emails that way, so you'll have um, this as a good reference. Um, uh, yeah, and if you want a, uh, you know, basically kind of the presentation as well, um, Araceli said she could send that through us as well if you guys wanted that to see too. So um, thank you everybody for attending. We had a good crowd tonight. Uh, thank you, obviously, Araceli, you're the best. And <laughs> we'll, talk to you all. we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for coming. Sounds good. Good night, everyone.